Hi, I'm Morgan Jaremus with RT Book Reviews, and I am delighted to be sitting next to you, Gail Foreman, YA author, extraordinaire, award winner, bestseller. Um, you're absolutely, your, your books are magical. And I, and I say that because there's not necessarily magic in them, but the characters and the stories you create are beautiful. They're realistic, they're heart wrenching, they're redemptive. And they're so relatable. Um, what is it like for you to kind of get into the mindset of a teenager? Because these are these are young adults that you're writing about. So you're getting into the mindset of a teenager. What does that feel like for you? First of all, I love what you just said about the magic stuff. I mean, particularly with Just One Day and Just One Year, I really kind of, those books to me are so much about the magic that happens in everyday life. So I love that you hit right on that. And as far as getting into the mindset of, the, of a teenager, like it's, I can't get out of the mindset of a teenager. <laughs> I often sort of joke to people that if I tried to sit down and write a book about a 43-year-old mother of two, which is what I am, I wouldn't know how to do that voice. Which makes no sense because, once again, it's what I am. But it's when I want to sit down and tell a story, the characters and the voices that kind of come to me are these younger people. And I don't feel like I tell young stories. The things I'm writing about are things that are meaningful to me now, things that I'm working through now. I'm not going back to high school and reliving it. But it's it's these these people that are between the ages of like 17 and 22 or so that are the ones I want to tell the story with and I through and I think it's because like I don't know at that age there's just there's less filter am I allowed to curse here there's there's less sure. there's less bullshit like <laughs> everything is kind of raw and more authentic and it just feels like a more immediate way to tell a truer story. Well, you dealt, um, you're, you're, you've got a set of companion novels, If I Stay and Where She Went, um, and, and that deals with some very, very heavy topics. Uh, and, and now you have a second set of companion novels, um, which is very different, and that is uh, Just One Day and Just One Year. You're just saying it's very different because I don't kill anybody. It, well, <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. The drama, the drama is definitely rest the stake, down. The stakes are lower. The stakes are lower. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not, we're not dealing with comas. Not we're not dealing with, with, that. with yeah. family members being being gone um so in in like what changed for you what made you, you you know you went in in your first books you went you went there you you saw kind of the darkest deepest most awful thing that can happen to a person and now with just one day it's it's still dealing with some very heavy issues about finding yourself and and who you want to be but it's it's a little bit more you know there Allison's traveling and she's having a really good time and she's meeting new people and mm -hmm. having this great experience. What made you change up the tone for these these two sets of novels? You know, I had told the story I needed to tell through If I Stay. I mean, that was kind of based on a, a personal thing that had happened many years before and I, it was a story I needed to tell. And even though there is all this death in it, believe it or not, it was like a beautiful book to write because it's also a book about love and music and, and sort of choosing your path in life. So, you know... I wrote that book, and I know it, people. I always get people yelling at me like, "You made me cry!" And I was on an airplane. We talked oh, about. Oh, it's so true! <laughs> like, don't pick it up on the subway because you will get the yeah. stairs when you just break yeah. down. I know. I feel like we should put a <laughs> warning sticker on it. Um, one of the unique challenges with just one day and with just one year is is there's a certain kind of like it's like working with emotional plutonium when you are writing a book like If I Stay because you know I'm not giving much away when I tell you I I kill off her parents by page eight. It's, it's an intense book, but when people come to me and tell me that they have cried in just one day, I find it really, flatter, really flattering because I didn't do any of that. So if I can take you to those same emotional places, if I can give you all the feels, which is what I want to do with my books without killing anybody, it, it, that's what I want to do. So Allison goes on this journey, and it, it's about her kind of figuring out her identity um, and who she wants to be and deciding that she... She has a say in that, that she can decide, wait, I, I don't want like this, this path I've been on. And I think that's kind of universal. I think we've all had a time in our lives where we've looked in the mirror, we've looked at our lives, and we're like, this isn't, this isn't the person I want to be. And how do I become that person? And that's kind of just one day in a nutshell. And it's very funny to me because I've read some reviews of people who are like, you know, I was surprised by the direction this book took because I thought it was going to be a really fluffy love story. And I'm thinking, have you, have you read any of my books before? <laughs> There's no bunnies I mean, in there. Are, there is love story and romance, and it, it can be fluffy and light. And I definitely like to put humor in my books, but you know, and I love books that are that. But like that, that's just that's just not how I roll. Well, let's talk. There's let's call it two parts. To, do we call it a duet or a, a, a duology? Duet, duet, yeah. yes. There's there's two parts. Well, even there's two parts in in the first book, yeah. just one day, yeah. because we have 
the Just One Day, mm -hmm. where Allison, she's kind of the quintessential good girl. Mm -hmm. She gets great grades. She's got her path, which kind of primarily her parents maybe set out for her for her like mom. med school, yeah. her mom, yeah. med school and all of that. And she's really like when, when um, she's on a, a European trip and when some of the other teens that are with her, they're kind of going out and sneaking to the bars and doing that. And she's not, no. she, she knows, you know, she's, she's that good girl. She's, she's the one that kind of, you know, helps everyone else kind of stay on the path. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she meets this hunky foreign actor yeah. and she like literally spur the moment he invites her to France for an adventure and she goes she's never done anything like this before. nothing like it nothing like what it. like at 18 what makes her able to say yes to that proposition I think you know she's at first it happens because she bumps into him on the train you know first first she does the minor rebellion of not going to see Hamlet that's what kicks it all off she's in as the book opens, the Royal Shakespeare she, Company right. of Hamlet she's and in it's, line to see Hamlet yeah. and he's like cool thespians come by They're like we're doing Twelfth Night outside come and something in her just says go do that so that's a tiny little rebellion there she goes she has a moment with the guy but nothing happens, and then she sees him on the train the next day, and she starts, and here's something that happens. He says that she looks like Louise Brooks, and then he starts calling her Lulu, which is Louise Brooks, the 1920s uh, silent film actress. That was her nickname, and that kind of liberates something in her. There's this, this side of her, and she comes to think of it as Lulu, and it's the person that she, she always suspected was in her, but she could never be, but somehow... Being on this train, being far away, being with this particular person, that is liberated. So when he invites her to come to Paris, Allison says no, but Lulu says yes. And she spends the day in Paris, needless to say, falling in love with Paris, mm -hmm. falling in love with Willem, and falling in love with Lulu, the side of herself. And then she wakes up after that one day, and Willem is gone, and Lulu has disappeared. And Paris doesn't look so pretty. And so and the rest of the. She's scared. And she's scared because she's Alice. She's in a foreign country she and know she, doesn't, anything. she doesn't speak the language. And, and But uh, fortunately, she definitely has contacts and she's able to get back home. Yeah. And when I say there's kind of two parts to the story, um, the first half of the book is this, this terrific adventure into this exotic city where literally they're pointing at the metro map with their eyes closed, deciding where to go. And then all of a sudden, she goes back stateside, she's in college, and all of these things are expected. Getting good grades, uh, making you know, making sure she has the right friends, mm -hmm. and she's doing you know on the right path. And this is supposed to be the most exciting adventure, but but really, she's already she knows what adventure tastes like. And for her, college isn't necessarily it. And so the second half of the novel is her dealing with, well, now I have to be an adult. Now right. I have to decide where my life is going to go. The it, sparkle's gone for her. It's like she's been sold a bill of goods, and then she realizes that it's that it's counterfeit. And she gets to college, and the problem's not with college. The problem is that, you know, it's pre-med, and do this, and do this. And it just, nothing feels right. And that's another thing that I think a lot of people get to college, and it's supposed to be the best year of your life, just like that trip was supposed to be the best trip of her life. And it's not, because you, you have these expectations it's going to be a certain way. And you kind of have to readjust and struggle and, and, and flounder for a bit. And then, and then you find your way. And so I think the meat of the book is about Allison figuring out who she is and who she wants to be. And yes, going back and, and trying to figure out what happened with Willem, but that is all sort of part of her journey of, of figuring out, like, who was this person I was for that day? Is that person right. really in me, or was it completely made up? Was this person that I fell in love with, was that completely made up, or was there something real there? So that's that's the book. No, and I, and I love, and she does, without giving too much away, she does decide to go back. Mm -hmm. And when she does, there's there's a line in the book that you have where she says, I'm not only looking for Willem, I'm looking for Lulu, yeah. and, and herself, mm -hmm. and who she wants to be. And I thought that was so poignant, because who doesn't? want to find, you know, mm -hmm. who, has, who has had an experience and they want to go back there and they want to be that person. Yeah. And it's almost like your, your own role model in a way, like, how do I get back to that place? Yeah, absolutely. How do I, I, I loved the person I was for that day. I was liberated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I stay in where, and where she went, both took place in like 24 hour periods. And, and I like looking at that sort of condensed time frame of like how much life can change. I mean, Mia's life certainly does change, but I, really think that in reality what happens is that something can happen in a day or in an hour or in a minute that catalyzes something. But really, to change your life, it takes work. 
And so I kind of wanted to pull, pull the lens back and look at Allison through that year and the work that she had to do and the changes and the relationships and how those evolved to become that person that she wanted to be, that she had been for that day, to become truly that, that liberated self. And if she finds Willem, if something happens there, like, who knows? But that, to me, was Allison's journey was, was the most important love story. Well, later this year, you have just one year mm -hmm. coming out. And Willem has a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> explaining to do, yeah. <laughs> because you, where, where, you leave, where you leave your characters, um, there, are, there are a lot of question marks. And so you pick this up again, and you decide to go from Willem's point of view. Right. And... And that's really exciting because I, re I while I was while I was reading uh, just one day, at some points I would get a little frustrated because I wanted to know what was happening inside his head, and I and you don't because you, don't. you only get Allison's point of view. And so when I heard you're doing a companion novel and we get inside of Williams, I was so excited for this, and and I can't wait to hear from his his side of the story. But he does have a lot of explaining to do because they don't necessarily leave off because she does wake up in a foreign city and he's and he's gone. He's gone. And um not everyone might might know like think of him as a hero after that. No, but but you you wanna you wanna show what happened. People are pretty suspicious of Willem and, and I understand that and I don't want to give anything really away because I think so much of discovering so much of the I hope satisfaction of the second book is kind of seeing the whole picture in a way that when you finish that second book, you know things about the characters that they don't know. Mm -hmm. So you have this whole complete picture that, that at that point, Allison and Willem don't have, but you do. And you understand so much about the two of them and why she, you, you understand, I think, from just one day, why she was drawn to him, but you'll see why he was drawn to her and, and how they may have overlapped or may have you know crossed paths or missed each other. So there's a lot of that. Things you think you know about Willem are true and they're not true. You know, I think that one of the important lessons from the second book is that, that everything changes when the perspective changes. So I love that you said that with the second book you wanted to give a complete picture because I'm going to go back to your first set of companion novels. Okay. Talk about complete picture. If I Stay is going to be on the big screen. It's going to be, it's starting to be filmed. Again, at the end of the, it seems like at the, by the end of the year the you've fall. got all sorts of fall. Lots happening in the fall. And so we're going to get the complete picture of if I stay, because a little birdie told me Chloe Moritz is actually going to be playing Mia. Chloe Moritz is Mia. She's our Mia. I'm so excited about that. That's so incredible I because know. Chloe, she is she's, she's so talented. I know, right? That's exactly what I was going to say. She can play any role, yeah. and so it doesn't surprise me at all that this is a role that she chose because it's so intense that I just know she's going to be able to just dig right in. Yeah, I feel like Chloe will knock it out of the park and. The director is R.J. Cutler, who's such an interesting guy. He is a documentary filmmaker, so he's made re most recently a documentary about Dick Cheney. And before that, he did that documentary, the September issue about Vogue. But he's also, uh, he is in television, so he is one of the executive pro producers of Nashville. And he directed like, several episodes of that, so he really understands about music and integrating that into a story. And he just really gets this book on such a cellular level that I just am so excited. So like we've got a great team. We have him, we have Chloe, we've got these wonderful producers. So it's been a long time coming and I know the fans have just been eagerly and patiently waiting. And mm -hmm. I really think that it's going to be worth it because I think there's gonna be a payoff with these with this particular team. I think it's gonna be brought to the screen in a way that we wanna see Mia and Adam and the whole family story brought to the screen. And I'm expecting a lot of tears when I go in that. But I also am expecting for my heart to completely melt because it's just, it's one of those love stories that it just, you never forget it. When you read If I Stay, it will stay with you forever because there is such a poignancy and a sweetness. And to all your love stories, what, what you write, it really, it makes, it makes the readers fall oh, in love with you. your characters. I think um, with If I Stay, there's definitely the, the love story with Mia and Adam, and that, that plays into the next book. But it's also such a love story about Mia and her family, and Mia and her best friend Kim, mm -hmm. and Mia and music. So I think that, you know, even though people often ask me, like, was that a really hard book to write, and did you cry? And I did. I, I cried in all the places that people probably cried while reading it. But it was a beautiful book to write because whenever I was writing the flashback scenes, it was just about this character who was just immersed in love. I mean, she just had this wonderful, wonderful life. So. 
it's just a story of, of love all around. I think it's a love story, like capital L, capital S. <laughs> Um, so again, we have just one year that comes out later this year, mm -hmm. and then we're also going to be hearing news because in the fall, uh, if I stay, is going to be filmed. So I'm expecting some news to Over come out summer. later. I think yeah. we'll start hearing this summer about other casting Excellent. choices. So I've, I've heard some ideas, but obviously nothing there. <laughs> the big question is like, who will play Adam? Obviously. That is, that is the Adam. big question. Yes, everybody has an opinion on that, except for me, apparently. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking with me today. I had Thanks such a wonderful it. time getting to know your characters through your eyes a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful having a conversation like this.